Psalm 119, verse 71. It was good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. It, it, it is good for me that I've been afflicted. And what the passage is actually saying is that the affliction put me in a good space. It's the affliction that put me in a better moment. It's the affliction that put me in a better sort of the affliction that put me in a, in, in a larger uh, uh, space of occupancy. It, it is the affliction that made it good for me. Tell the person next to you, it's good for me, it's good for me, it's good. It was good for me that I w w was afflicted. Uh, the affliction, the, what this passage is actually saying is that the affliction put me in a good position. And, and, and it helped me to know him more intimately. And I want to talk to some people and let you know that the real purpose of testing is to inspect your love for God. The testing inspects your love for God to see if you're going to stay with him and stay in his word. And I'm going to prove this by scripture. The testing comes to inspect your love for God and to prove whether or not you're going to stay with him and stay with his word. And the second thing that testing does, it makes it good for you. Somebody say, it's good for me. David said, it was good for me that I was afflicted, that I may know your, your word. So if you've been going through some things under the sound of my voice, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to some people. If it seems like you've been in a season of stuck, a season where things have been shortened, a season where things seem like they have not been going the way that you thought they would go, a season where you're not hearing God like you thought, a season of attack, I want to say congratulations to you. You're under a spirit of transformation. Hallelujah. Tell somebody next to you, transform, 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 transform. Many of you right now, the reason why it has been tight and the reason why it's been a space of darkness and it's been a space where you cannot feel your way through. You hit this block in the spirit. The Bible, the Bible is making it clear to us that God has you in a space of, of transformation. I need you to slap somebody. Don't slap them, but push somebody on the other side of you and say, trans, trans, transform. The spirit of change is on faith culture church. And the word change means to make or to become different. Someone say transform, transform. Either it's going to become different or God's going to make it different. And he's making you different through the transformation process. That's the reason why it's uncomfortable and it feels like your arms being twisted. You're being transformed. It feels like you're walking slower than you used to. You, you, Autobots transform. Somebody say transform. Tra transform and you're about to roll out the spirit of transformation is on our house and the word trans the definition of the word trans transformation is a thorough or dramatic change of appearance it's about to be some drama it's going to be so ridiculously different that it's going to create drama there's a dramatic change that's coming upon your life and a dramatic move that's coming upon your spirit and a dramatic shift that's coming upon your house and a dramatic change that's coming upon your anointing. There is a change that's coming upon you and it's going to be, I feel the power of God. It's going to be some drama. Tell the person next to you it's going to be some drama because people are going to look at you and say, how did she? People are going to look at you and say, how did he? They must have cheated. They must have lied. Uh-uh, baby. It's the goodness of of God and the spirit of transformation on my life that's making me different than I've ever been before. Tell somebody, transform, transform, transform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God is not making you more of what you used to be. He's literally transforming you. Shout it, transform. transform. The word transformation in the Greek is the word metamorpho. Metamorpho. That word metamorpho. Is the same word that we get our, our word metamorphosis. But the issue with metamorphosis is that many believers, because of the test and because they fail the test, they get stuck in a state of an incomplete metamorphosis. If you look this up scientifically, there's two kinds of metamorphosis. There's an incomplete metamorphosis, and then there's a complete metamorphosis. The differences between the two is that the incomplete metamorphosis only has three stages. 
the complete metamorphosis has four stages. And, and, and a complete metamorphosis usually happens to insects that can, that can fly or leap when they're done, like the butterfly and the frog. But an incomplete metamorphosis usually happens to things like termites and be things that, that end up being a pest or pestilence. And this is the space that many people are in right now. When God let the affliction come and when God let the things come upon your life, he let the test come upon your life. A lot of us, we back out of it so we are at a state of incomplete metamorphosis. In the incomplete metamorphosis you have the the egg stage that's stage one the nymph stage that's stage two and then the adult stage are y'all listening to me when you go from when you are in an incomplete metamorphosis you're birthed out and you're just a smaller version of an adult it looks just like an adult it eats the same food as an adult it it, it, it operates the way that an adult does but it's but but when it becomes an adult it just gets bigger and there are people under the sound of my voice where they don't have an index finger. They're missing a the point. They don't get it. They, 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 they are in an incomplete state of metamorphosis. That means that they were birthed out looking like something, and then they just became a bigger something. In other words, you got more word on you, but you still look the same. You got more prayer, but you still see the same. You got, you got more people around you, but you're still operating the same. You're just a bigger version of what you used to be. But I don't know about you. I'm going through the spirit of metamorphosis, a complete metamorphosis. I'm not going to be a bigger of what I used to be. I'm being completely drastically transformed into something I never thought I'd be. God is about to make you something that you never dreamed of and never wished you could be and never even had it in your mind to think that you could become. It's a complete transformation, a complete metamorphosis. See, in a complete metamorphosis, there's four stages. Someone say four stages. Have, have a seat. In a complete metamorphosis, there's the egg stage. And then after the egg stage, there, there's, the, there's the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the narrow stage. Or the lateral stage, should I say. In that lateral stage it is when uh, the, the thing is birthed out and just, it just eats. It just eats, eats, eats. It just consumes, consumes, consumes. Just food, food, food. See, see, when it's an incomplete metamorphosis, you eat the same thing that the parents eat. But when it's a complete metamorphosis, you just eat anything. They're just eating and eating and eating and eating. And, and it's coming, becoming something different. But all of a sudden, the eating stops. All of a sudden... What you used to eat is no longer good for you. All of a sudden, the meals that you used to love taste different to you now. It's almost like having a cold. I just can't taste it. It's, about, it's like people who had the, the coronavirus. They just can't taste no more. I, I, can't spe- I, can't, I can't smell anymore because something on the inside of me is changing. What used to be good is no longer wetting my palate. My appetite is changing. And that's when you're getting in the pupil stage, P-U-P-A-L, the pupil stage. In that stage is the cocoon stage. See, in that stage is when things get hard. I'm about to preach to somebody. In that stage is when it seems like you're cut off from everybody else. In that stage is where it seems like God is not speaking anymore. That's the stage that seems like you're growing, but it's hurting while you're growing. That's the stage where it seems like, well, I can't even see myself anymore. I don't even feel like who I used to be. I'm so different and I can't even tell why. I'm going somewhere, but I can't even tell where. I'm getting bigger, but it feels like I'm getting smaller because things are being cramped up all around me. That, that's the pupil stage. That's the cocoon stage. That's the stage where it gets hard. If you're in the pupil stage, I got news for you. That's the stage where you become a pupil. That's the stage where God is teaching you at a different level. It's, it's, it's hard for me right now because I'm in a different, I'm being transformed. If things are the same way that they were when it was easy, it means that you're not being transformed. When things begin to tighten up around you, when it seems like, why are my bills not paid? When it says, why am I in this test? You're in the test because God says, I'm transforming you. I'm making you into something different than you thought you would ever be. Why am I here? Because you're, tra- somebody say, transform, 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 transform. I prophesy that this time next year, you will not be the same. You will not walk the same. You will not talk the same. You will not pray the same because the spirit of transformation is upon your life. Somebody say, transform, transform. It's a metamorphosis. But, 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 but when you're in that pupil stage, which is where many people are right now, you don't stay in that pupil stage. It gets hard, but what you're not being able to see is that that hardness is actually protecting you. 
It's the same principle that was upon Job. The Bible says that Job is being afflicted, but I can't touch him all the way because there's something around him. There's a hedge of protection around him that's blocking out the things from getting in. So what you see as affliction, God sees as protection. What you see as people leaving, God sees upgrading your social status. What you see as things falling apart, God is putting something together better better than what it ever could have possibly been. Somebody say transform, transform, trans. And in that stage of a cocooning, in that stage, that pupil stage, if you just stay in the stage long enough, if you don't fail your test, it, because I said a test is for uh, to see and inspect your love for God and inspect if you're going to stay with his word. And it inspects you to see if you're going to transform to receive his goodness. I'm going to say this again. The purpose of a test is to inspect your love for God, to see if you're going to stay with his word and and to make you transform to receive more of his goodness. Are y'all with me? If you stay in the cocoon and do not move and do not break yourself out before it is time, because many people, while they're still being developed in the cocoon, they die in the cocoon. Many insects that press and try to get out before time end up having sudden infant death. People die in the season that they're not supposed to be in by trying to hatch themselves too soon. But if you will stay in the cocoon, stay as a pupil, stay in the pupil stage, I guess guarantee you when God is ready a breakthrough is coming and the spirit of breakthrough is upon many of you right now because your arms are stretching and your legs are being extended and while your arms are stretching something is about to break open and when it breaks open what do you do when something breaks open you begin to give God a great big praise hallelujah why don't you give him a praise because something is breaking through Give him a praise. Hey. Because transformation is happening. Breakout is happening. Breakthrough is happening. A new day is coming. A new day is being revealed. The break of day. The break of day. The break of... Give God a praise. Shake the person next to you and say transform, transform, transform. Tra- shake somebody else and say transform, trans, trans, tra- transform. It's the word transformation. It's the same Hebrew word as the word transfigure. When Jesus was up in the mountain, the Bible says that he was there with his disciples. They looked at him one time and then they looked back again and he didn't look the same because he was transfigured. He was enlightened. He was, he was transitioned into a greater level. God literally uh, metamorphed him at the molecular level where his body became translucent. And that's what the Lord is doing to many of you right now. You are about to shine like you have never shined before. If you can stick with God through the test, if you can stick with God through the affliction, it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for you. You're going to shine. You're going to shine to your family members and shine to those on your job. And you're going to shine. You're going to look at yourself in the mirror and can't see yourself because you're too bright everything is changing you're gonna look at yourself and say self who are you how did it get this good how did and then yourself's gonna talk back to you and say it was good for you that you were afflicted it was good for you that they did that it was good for you that you lost that it was good for you give God a praise if you're ready for the spirit of transformation because it's good it's good I feel good coming Praise him for the good, because good is about to shh. I know I got you talking a lot, but shake somebody else who don't believe it. Say transform, transform, trans. Shake somebody that you love and demand transformation. He's got you there because he's transforming you. Hey! transformation transformation something new something different something more than what i used to be a complete matrix the, the, i'm in the matrix i'm i'm transforming into a better version of what they thought i would i'm charm somebody say transformation. transformation hallelujah 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 it's a metamorphosis it's a Come on, let me
me work this passage so I can give you a few points. Psalm 119. Let's, talk, let's see what David was talking about. Psalm 119, verse 67. It says this. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. There's meat in that. That's saying that before I got tested. You see, let me talk to you about what, what a test is. Uh, when, God, when, when God tests you, it's completely different when the, than when the devil tempts you. If you are being tempted with evil, that's not from God. The Bible says in James 1.13, he says that God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt anybody with evil, but every man is tempted when they are drawn away by their own lust and enticed. So you're being tempted because of you. But lust, after it conceives, brings forth sin, and sin brings forth what? Death. So the end of the devil's temptation is to kill something in you. But when God tests you, the way God tests you, he usually tests you by allowing attacks. And I'm going to prove that through scriptures. He tests you by shortening up what you used to walk in. He tests you when you were believing him for something and it didn't show up when you thought. He tests you by not speaking to you the way he used to speak to you because he's trying to get you to hear him at a complete different level. He tests you by allowing people to leave your life because he needs to give you an upgrade in, in, in your social stratosphere. He tests you by allowing things to come upon you to shorten what you used to walk in. But the end of God's testing is always to put you in a good position. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Are y'all with me? So let's look at the path. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. The last time I was in this test, I backslid. The last time I was in a test from God, I fell off. But now let's look at his testimony. But he says, but now I keep your word. The purpose of the affliction, the purpose of the test is to see, uh, inspect your heart with God and to see if you're going to keep his word. And to transform you into a person that's able to receive the goodness of God. Y'all with it? Be before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. What, what's the word? You are good and you do good. S say this. Say, God is good. You can be ghetto and say, he do good. <laughs> say, God is good and he does good. I promise you, good is coming. Good is coming. Good is coming. Good, good is coming to you. The, the affliction puts you in, in a good spot. Hallelujah. You are good and you do good. Teach me your statues. The proud, watch this, the proud have forced a lie against me. What was his affliction? It was God allowing people to attack. The proud have forced a lie against me, um, but, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Not the proud has forged a lie against me, so I'm going to re-attack on social media. Not the proud has, has forged a lie against me, so I'm going to respond to them. No, I'm going to keep your word. I, I learned that this is just this little light affliction that you're using to allow me to be promoted. So as opposed to keeping my contact, I'm going to keep your word. Y'all right? with me? Point number one, don't let testing through attacks stunt your transformation process. Don't become dwarfed. Don't become stunted. Don't become not, uh, don't uh, be a person that's knocked off of your spot of transformation because of somebody else. There are 8 billion people in the world. There's no way in the world I'm going to let one person stunt my transformation. I got some growing to do. I got some growing. You're never going to outgrow growth. You're going to keep transforming. So tests are going to keep coming. Are you listening to me? You're going to keep going higher, so tests are going to keep coming. But as the tests keep coming, I'm going to keep on my knees and keep in the word and keep my love language beautiful and keep transforming and keep allowing the goodness of God to come in my life. Verse 70 says this, their heart is fat like grease, but, but I delight in your law. You, you see it? They, 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 they say this, but I, I, I'm in the word. It is good for me that I was afflicted that I may learn your statutes. Point number two, my testing is an opportunity to learn what I didn't know about God. Did you know that you are walking in the season of what you know? And whatever you don't have, whatever you have not walked in is because of what you have not, ex have not learned from God yet. And some things cannot be told to you from a podium. God speaks to you individually and in a tailor-made way through your personalized tests. That's how you know him. Paul said that I, I might know him. How? In the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his 
You learn, oh, I feel like, I feel like I'm a Baptist preacher today, y'all. You, you learn the goodness of God through your, through your suffering. That's how you connect with the risen Christ who was on a cross. They hung him high. They laid him out and he suffered. And because he suffered, he was resurrected. And because he was resurrected, he lives in me. And because he lives in me, I got power when I go through to rise up. Are y'all listening to me? You learn who God is when you get in the trenches. You learn who God is when people stop telling you who God is. You learn who God is when you stop paying attention and following everybody with a microphone and follow the inward voice of the Holy Ghost taking you through your personal life says you are being trans tell somebody transform 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 you being you being trans my opera my testing is an opportunity to learn what I didn't know of God I got to get out of this 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 lateral stage I got to get out of this pupil stage I don't know what's wrong with believers Stay, they, we, there's people who are stuck in that situation. They, they're stuck in the pupil stage because they refuse to let the pressure squeeze them. He squeezes. He tightens up on you for the purpose of extracting the good out of you and leaving the shell behind, leaving that exoskeleton behind and taking the good and putting it in a whole new level. Somebody say transform, transform, transform. Verse 72, your law, the law of your mouth is better to me than a thousand coins of silver and gold. That's how you know you've grown. When, when what God said is good is better than what you think is good. When he's, when he's, I was about to say gooder, but when he's better than money. When God becomes better than you needing people around you all the time. When he comes better than whatever pleases you the most. That's how you know you've got it. He's sweeter than the honey. He's sweeter than the honey in a honeycomb. Verse 72 says the law of your mouth is better than a thousand coins of silver and gold. Your hand. Now, wait a minute. Look at verse 73. I need you to see something. Look at verse 73. Now, in the book of Psalm 119, you will see the entire Hebraic alphabet. And every time you see those capitalized letters, that's in Hebrew alphabet. And this particular Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet in verse 73, Yod. Say that word, Yod. yod. You know what that, that, that word means, Yod? That word means your hand. It means the hand of God. And so David is now getting ready to transition his message into the fact that while I was afflicted, I was in your hands. While I was in my cocoon, your hand was upon me. The reason why I could not see is because your hand was covering me. The reason why I didn't totally fall because your hand was lifting me up. The reason why I won the battle even though I didn't fight is because your hand, your hand was fighting for me. God has you right in the middle of his hand. And God is shaping you and fashioning you and forming you in your cocoon. But his hand is still on you. And the reason why the devil can't touch you all the way is because the hand of God is on your life. God is laying hands on you right now. You don't need everybody to lay hands on you because God is laying hands on you. God is touching you. God is placing his blessing on you. And when God's hands are on you, nobody can stop you. Somebody say, your hand, your hand, your hand, your hand. And David begins to say, your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me, have a seat please. Give me understanding that I may, I may learn your commandments. Point number three is this. When I'm learning, when I'm in testing, I must know that my cocoon is really his hand. Mm-hmm. When I'm in testing, I got to know this in my mind, that my cocoon is really his hand reshaping me. It's his hand, Pastor Josh. It's his hand. It's the hand of God. God, why did things get crazy? Because I put my hand on it. Mm -hmm. God, why am I not seeing this? My hands are covering your eyes. There's some things I need you to miss. I don't need you to be exposed to some things. So my hands are on your eyes. And by the time I remove my hands, you're going to only see me. And if you behold me, you've got everything. If you can see me, you've got the goodness. If you can see me, you've got the blessing. If you can see me, you've got the upgrade. If you can see me, you've got resurrection power. My hand is upon your life. God, I can't breathe. My hand is on your neck. 
because I'm oxidizing you. I'm blowing, but God, God, I can't talk. My hand is on your mouth. I'm blowing into you. God, I can't move. My hand is on your feet. I'm positioning you. God, I can't do it. My hand is on you, and yes, you can. It's my hand in your life. It's my hand in your family. It's my hand on your job. It's my hand in your season. It's my hand fashioning you. Somebody say, your hands, your hands, your hands. The hand of God is lifting you higher. And the same hand that's protecting you is the same hand that's positioning you for goodness. It's the hand of God ready to cause good to come into your life. Have a seat, have a seat for me. Pass your test. Tell the person next to you, pass your test. Pass your test. Pass those tests. If you're in the lateral stage, just eat, 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 and pass your test. If you're in the pupil stage where you feel like you're, you're in a cocoon, just, just let him squeeze you and pass your tests. Because God normally doesn't tell you when you failed your test. But your life will speak to you because you'll take it again. Pass the test. Someone say pass the test. Pass the test. I told you earlier that the test, when God tests you in the affliction, when the afflictions come, uh, it's for the purpose of inspecting your love for God. Not that he would know anything, but so that you can see where you really are. Because that's who you really are. And st- when you're being squeezed, when the pressure is on you, and when he's stretching you, and when he's prodding on you, you're going to come out. And you can't get away from you. Wherever you go, you're going to take you with you. So you might as well let him squeeze you. He's squeezing on your credit. To get you in a mannerism of integrity. He's squeezing on your job because you've been in a space too long when you know you're supposed to be an owner. But I'm going to let your boss test you so you can learn how to be in leadership. So that one day you'll lead people well. I'm going to let you get tested by dads so that one day you'll be able to father well. I'm going to let you get squeezed by a mom so that one day you'll be able to mother well. I'm going to let you get squeezed by your friends so that you'll be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's my hand on your life testing you. Who am I preaching to up in this Presbyterian church? I dare you to praise him. I dare you to bless him. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle of your cocoon. Whew, the spirit of transformation, the spirit of change, the spirit of breaking out, the spirit of breaking through. Stuff is changing. Stuff is transitioning. Things are rearranging right now. Particles are shifting right now. Elements are transposing right now. Natural things are literally transposing right now. The risen Christ is rearranging. Here's a metamorphosis going on. I'm almost done having a seat. Pass those tests. I told you that the purpose of a test is for the, for, the, for the space or for the reason of you, and I can't say this enough, to test your and inspect your love for God and to see if you're going to keep his word and also to position you and transform you to receive his goodness. Watch these passages, Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may what? test them whether they will walk in my law or not the test is to inspect your love for God and to see if you're going to keep his word and to position you into a space of transformation to receive his goodness Exodus chapter 20 Moses said to the people do not fear God has come to what test you that that it, it test you and that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin What is sin? Actual and willful transgression against God's law. The purpose of a test is to see and inspect your love for God and to see if you're going to keep his word. And to transform you and put you in position to receive his what? His good. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 says this. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Why were they in the wilderness for 40 years? Because they didn't let God transform them. It got tight with water. We thirsty. Okay, Moses, take, the, take, 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 the, uh, take a branch, throw it in the water, make the water sweet. Although the water was never bitter, it got bitter when they got to it. Lord, we hungry. Okay, Moses, rain down bread from heaven. 
Lord, we've been traveling all this time. You, you failed your test. Because as opposed to your mouth speaking about the goodness of God that's on the way, we're giving resume and credence to, to the test. So what you give credence to is what you will stay in. That, that's a whole, that's a whole other message on that one. You were in, these, in this wilderness for 40 years. Uh, to do what? To humble you and to test you. Notice that that word humble is there. Mm -hmm. Humble you and test you. Some of us are in the cocoon and we have not transformed because we refuse to be humbled. We, we think more of ourselves than we ought to. So God says, I love you so much, I'm going to keep you there. And if it takes 40 years to get pride out of you, and the reason why pride has to get out of you is because pride comes before, pride comes before what? A fall. A fall. I'm trying to lift you up, so I got to squeeze that pride out of you. You've been in this wilderness for 40 years to humble you and to test you and to know what was in your what? Heart. And whether you would keep his commandments or not, the purpose of a test is to respect your love for God and to see if you're going to keep his word and to transform you and put you in a position to receive his what? His goodness. Joe, uh, Judges 2.22 says this, so that I may test them, so that through them I may test Israel. Through who? Israel's enemies. Remember I told you when God allows a test, he, the way he aff allows affliction is he allows a tax. So it's talking about the enemies of Israel. Watch this. So that through them, I, some people miss this. He's doing it through them. It's good that they are there because through them, he's elevating you. He messed over me. Yeah, your ministry is coming through them. They tried to suppress me. Your testimony is coming through them. Through them, I'm going to test I may test Israel whether they will do what? Keep my ways or keep the ways of the Lord and walk in them as their fathers did or not. Judges chapter 3. Now these are the nations which I left. Some things God didn't put there, but he left it there. These are the nations that I left that, they, that he might do what? Y'all with me still? These are the nations that I left that he may do what? He might test Israel by them that is all who had not known the wars of the Lord in Canaan Judges chapter 3 I got a couple more Judges chapter 3 verse 4 it says and they were left God didn't put it there he, he left it there they were left that he might do what test Israel by them to know whether or not they would obey his commandments or obey the commandments of the Lord and that which he had commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Jeremiah 17.10 I, the Lord, search the heart and what? Test the mind even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Last one. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 16. Watch this. I'm the Lord who fed you in the wilderness with what? Manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good to you in the end. The purpose of it, y'all thought I was lying, didn't you? The purpose of a test is to inspect your heart for God. Either you're in this or you're not in this. And to see if you're going to love him no matter what comes. Come hell, come high water, come trials, come tribulation, come times where it doesn't seem like he's speaking to me. I still got to love him and I'm going to stay with him even if I'm in a cocoon. I'm going to stay with you, Jesus. Even if you haven't spoken to me in years, I'm going to stay with you, Jesus. Because I know that the end of this test means that at the end of this test, good is coming to me. And I don't know who I'm talking to under the sound of my voice, but I believe that many of you are under the spirit of transformation transformation and I believe that you're going through a full metamorphosis and you're not going to get stuck in the lateral stage you're not going to get stuck in the pupil stage you're not going to get stuck in any stages you're going to blossom as a full adult and after you try someone say transform transform 
after you begin to transform, the Lord your God is getting ready to cause good to come into your life. And then those of you who are under the sound of my voice and you're ready for transformation and you're ready for the breakthrough and you're ready for the come out and you're ready for the good to come. You're ready for the good season to come. You're ready for the good moment to flow. You're ready for the good rivers to flow. The Bible says the good blessing to come. Oh, just be transformed. And I want you to activate your transformation by giving God the best praise you got. Give Jesus. Give Jesus a transformative, radical, life-changing Give Jesus a transformative, radical, life-changing, season-shifting, cocoon-breaking, graduated praise. Oh my God. Oh God. Oh God. This is a special moment. You got to reach up and grab this. Inhale this. And transform. Joshua Ross, get down here right quick. KC, get down here right quick. You guys are going to get the first fruit of transformation. Don't play. When a man of God releases a word like this, this is not just a message. This is a semester changing, outpouring. It's in the actual, by you being in this atmosphere, you're inhaling transformation. When you breathe in, you're inhaling transformation. And when you shout out, and when you breathe out, oh my God, you're evicting stagnation. When I, when I inhale, I'm inhaling transformation. But when I shout out, I'm evicting stagnation. That means that the spirit of change, every time I breathe, change is happening. Hey, every time I worship, change is happening. Every time I praise, change is happening. I got to call forth my sons into a season of change oh this is this is heavy guys take your head off Joshua Ross I'm just going to pour this oil on you <laughs> my god this is Casey I'm pouring this is the oil of change transformation in Jesus name oh, bah, 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 bah. transformation Joshua Ross in Jesus name Oh la 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 Oh la 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 Oh God. Oh God. Woo. Jesus. Oh Guys, y'all better get ready. I need all my pastors to come here. Pastors, come up real quick. Let's stick your hand out, pastors. This is the oil, right, your right hand. Oil of change. Shabababa. Oh, ba e e. Face, face the crowd, pastors.
Now listen. Pastors, back up this way as much as you can. Back up this way as much as you can. Even if you have to come on the stage. Come up on the stage. Do you see him? Oh, God. As many people. Now listen, this, don't feel ashamed that this is not you. But as many people that want to see change and transformation activate right now. You got to be willing to praise him like you've never praised him before. If you can't praise him like you've never praised him before, it's okay. Just hang out in your seat. But if you want to see transformation, the first step is run up to this front as fast as you can. I'm going to cut it off in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's good, right there. Step two. You're going to give God a praise. Because this praise is breaking open your cocoon. And after you praise God, our pastors are going to come and lay hands on you. And they're going to speak the word transform over you. Shut up. Do you see him, King of Heaven, Champion of all creation? Eyes of fire, voice of thunder, tearing through the sky and wonder. Just a light we hey, bye, bye, see him coming on a horse that's wild like lightning. Do you see? receive mode try not to fall out of you if you if you can maybe when you get hands laid if you feel the power just try to go to your knees pastors transform and roll out change 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 transformation Come on, it's a quick, it's quick, it's quick. It's quick. A simple touch. <laughs> Woo. Ah, bah, bah. Ah, ah, ah. A simple touch. Transformation. Woo. Speak it over them. Transform. 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 Transformation. Transformation. You're transforming.
If you've been prayed for, you may return to your seats. All right, let's get ready to support the Lord with our giving this morning, our tithes and offering. Let's be extremely charitable. Some of our transformations are financial transformations, and things are tight for you right now financially. It could be because your hand was closed when you were supposed to give. So now it's tight. Um, giving is such a phenomenal blessing and an opportunity that the Lord gives us to be generous. He blesses us like he literally takes and he says, here, I'm going to bless you. And I want you to take 10 percent. Really, in the Bible, it's almost like 30 something percent, 20 something percent. But take 10 percent and give it back to me so that I can take that 10 percent and bless it and then make your 90 percent stretch more than what it normally would have. That's a good thing, you all. That's why I say it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I really want, I don't want to stay on this point long, but I do want to see a lot of you all transform into a place of generosity. I don't like the poverty spirit. How many like poverty? Some of y'all gonna say amen to anything. Amen, pastor. You can, <laughs> I don't like poverty. But poverty is married to people with the poverty mindset. The poverty mindset will never extend and reach out and give. Like right now, because I'm going to say, y'all got the good stuff. Now I'm about to get the, get the other stuff. Y'all, got, y'all transforming, right? Yeah. While I'm speaking right now, many of you have tuned me out. That's the spirit of poverty. That's a poverty mindset. Like as soon as contributions come up, people tune out. Poverty has tuned you out. Okay? So, but we're going to break that. You don't have to, you don't even, watch this, to let you know I'm not, we're not trying to get anything extra out of you. Don't even break it in church. Start giving to people. Go, go, leave, leave service today. Go get you your Big Mac or whatever you get. I don't eat that stuff, but go get you some food. Go get you some Vicks barbecue sauce, plug. Go get you some juice from Victoria, plug. Get you, get your shirt from Blue, plug. Get you some makeup from Katisha. Some hair from Katisha. Get y'all, you know, y'all get some stuff. And then bless somebody else, too. And break that spirit of poverty off of you. All right, so here's the ways to give to Faith Culture, 512-675-1250. And you can go to myfcc.org. You can scan the QR code or you can give in the lobby. All right, we love you. God bless you.